Can you gain muscle and lose fat simultaneously? Body recomposition, the holy grail of physique transformation. Is it possible? Short answer is yes, but normally very hard to achieve. The vast majority of those who try will fail. In fact, they'll end up likely achieving neither objectives. Just as important as understanding how to successfully achieve recomposition, it's even more important to understand the main reasons why people fail so often at this goal. So that's what we're gonna to cover today. The six biggest mistakes people make when trying to achieve body recomposition. If you can avoid these issues, your chances of success are going to be much much higher. Number one, excessive calorie restriction. First mistake people make is trying for too much fat loss too quickly. Trying to drop too much fat too fast will end up making it impossible to gain muscle, or even worse, increase the chances of losing muscle. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. While it is possible to lose fat and build muscle at the same time, you shouldn't try to lose fat as fast as you would on a pure cutting plan. That's a recipe for disaster. The greater the calorie deficit, the more of the stress hormone cortisol will be produced, and the more likely you are to lower your mTOR, IGF-1, and insulin, which gives you the worst physiological profile for being able to build muscle. Oh, idiot! We should be trying to lose around one pound or just under half a kilo of fat per week. More than that, and it will be hard to build muscle. Okay, so we know we don't want to drop weight too quickly, otherwise gaining muscle is going to be non-existent. Are there any other mistakes around calories that people often make? Yeah, there is. Being in a calorie deficit seven days a week. And this is the calorie setup. Oftentimes, being in a calorie deficit seven days a week is gonna eventually cause you problems. Being in a chronic calorie deficit is more likely to lead to metabolic adaptation. And that's gonna make it harder to keep losing fat and building muscle. You'll have to reduce calories more and more, which will increase cortisol more and more, making it harder to build muscle. The key is having enough of a deficit to lose around one pound or half a kilo per week. But that deficit doesn't have to come from being in a deficit seven days a week. Sometimes an approach that I will take with some clients is to have a slightly larger deficit five days a week, then bump them up into a slight surplus two days a week. So we know that too low of a calorie restriction is going to work against you, as well as being in a calorie deficit 100% of the time could have you running into problems. Are there any other nutritional mistakes outside of just calories that people make when recomposition is their goal? Yeah, number three, not enough carbs. For recomposition, a low carb diet makes things much harder. Even when ingesting a calorie surplus, a low carb diet makes muscle growth more difficult. Low carbs, like low calories, lead to lower mTOR, less IGF-1 and less insulin, and again, more cortisol. Since one of cortisol's functions is to work with glucagon to increase blood sugar levels when low. Dieting already does all of that to some extent, but combining it with low carb intake Will simply make matters worse. Calories, yes, they need to be in that small calorie deficit, but don't be dropping all those calories from just carbs. Cool. Let's talk training. More specifically, mistakes in the gym that people so often make when trying to achieve body recomp. Number four, too much lifting volume. Now, the first mistake is adding more lifting volume. The reasoning here is that more training volume must equal a better chance of building muscle, as well as allowing them to expend more calories, right? In turn, burn more fat. Well, so you'd think. This approach might work for two to three weeks until bad stuff starts to happen. Again, you'll produce more cortisol, which is already higher in a calorie deficit which hurts your chances of building muscle and maybe even contributes to negative metabolic adaptations. Too much cortisol can mess with your thyroid, lowering T3 levels, which decreases metabolic rate. 
You can also produce a degree of muscle damage that exceeds your capacity to repair it and in turn have you losing muscle tissue instead of gaining it. More is not better in this case. As you can start to see, the common root of recomping failure is being excessive, like cutting calories, and carbs too much, dieting too hard every day, and using more and more volume in your training. Is it the same with rest days, or probably more accurately, lack of them. Number five, not enough off days from training. This is really either very short-sighted or the lack of knowledge has people assuming that a day off or a day that they're not in the gym is a day that they're not improving their physique. Look, I get it. And this is something that I often need to educate out of new clients that I have coming on. Emotionally, you want to speed things up, but trying to do that will actually slow down the process. Off days are days where you can lower cortisol and adrenaline levels, facilitate muscle glycogen replenishment, and spend more of your energy repairing and building muscle instead of fueling workouts. Off days are growth days. So lastly, what about cardio? Should this be in there? How much? How often? Not at all. What mistakes are people making here? Number six, not including cardio. The biggest mistake is people not using it when it comes to recomposition. Cardio, yeah, it has a bad rep among many lifters. I even try to use it as minimal as possible with my clients, in most cases. Still, provided it's not excessive and isn't the type that will jack cortisol up through the roof, like HIT, for example, cardio can be a very useful tool when trying to recomp. First, cardio allows you to eat a little bit more. And that's the main benefit when it comes to recomping. Let's say you do 200 calories worth of cardio four days a week. Well, that's essentially allows you to eat 150 to 200 calories more on those days and achieve the same results as if you had skipped cardio and eaten less. When it comes to recomping, adding 200 calories of food, like 50 grams of carbs or something like 20 grams of protein and 30 grams of carbs, will be more beneficial than any potential drawbacks you might get from low intensity cardio. You don't wanna be excessive with it, but it is a tool to use wisely. There you have it, folks. Six things guys overlook when it comes to losing fat and gaining muscle simultaneously. Some say it's a pipe dream, but to the educated, like us and now you, it's a very achievable reality. Catch us next week where we cover the best diet for guys over 40. You'll be surprised by the answer. Please make sure to subscribe and leave a comment below. Like the video if you found it helpful and pop that notification button so you're kept up to speed with our latest and greatest vids as they go live. From the team at Tailored Fit, have a wonderful week.